This 48 volt battery with these LG cells is coming along really nicely. I'm very happy with it. This is part two of a two part series, so if you wanna see what we've done so far, you can check out part one. I'm gonna start this video off with the capacity test because I love capacity tests and the numbers were really excellent. Uh, then we'll run through what we've done so far and some of the final touches uh, to call this battery complete. So here we go. Okay, this battery is now fully charged and sometimes people ask me how I charge it. Well, I have a Victron charge controller connected to the solar panels outside. <laughs> These LG cells are fully charged. Down here is the main positive, and up here is the main negative of the pack. You can see we have 58.6. On this meter, it reads 58.09, and I have zeroed this out right there. So this is going to tell us how many watt hours move through here. And we'll go ahead and turn this on. All right, so that's on, and we'll go ahead and we'll Turn this on, but we'll do it. Uh, that's in high. Let's see how many watts we're drawing. Uh, but that's okay. So we might discharge in four, four and a half hours instead of the five. But that's all right. Uh, got the heater on high, so that's drawing. And we'll come back and we'll check how many watt hours we use. Hopefully it's six kilowatt hours. We're about one hour into this test. Let's see how we're doing. There. We are almost at 54 volts. Now I think this inverter will shut itself off at 42 volts. 42 volts will be three volts per cell because I'm running a 14S or 14 cells in series system. Now we're two hours into the test. 51 volts and 2.8 kilowatt hours. Looking good at two hours into the test. Just past the three hour mark. Looks like we've got 48.9, 49, 4.4. .4. Four hours into this test. See how we're doing? 5.6 kilowatt hours. Looking good. Again, this is the four hour mark. All right, it just shut itself off. I'll turn that down. So at 42 volts, it shut itself off and the cells bounced a little bit. And look at that, over six kilowatt hours, almost 6.1 kilowatt hours. Uh, this is at four hours and 45 minutes. That is fantastic. These cells are performing as if they were brand new. Amazing. <laughs> and that is all through the BMS. In part one of the video, we assembled all the cell tabs together using some aluminum blocks and some 10 by 32 machine screws and nuts. Since then, I have added all the wiring for the BMS and put the BMS up on top. So we'll take a close up look of that and how I ran the wiring. All 14 cells are assembled. Everything is screwed together with these aluminum blocks. The BMS leads are coming off. I tape them as I go to prevent uh, shorting out, make it a little bit safer. Now I need to run some threaded rod through these holes. Now when I run the threaded rod through, I made these aluminum brackets just out of some aluminum angle that I had kicking around. These will sit on here, like that, so the thread rod will go through. In addition, I want to compress the cells. So what I did was I took a piece of cutting board, it's just plastic, and fit it in there. That way the aluminum angle will put pressure on this cutting board, which will put pressure on the cells, and that in turn will compress all the cells. That way, I'm not just simply compressing the plastic on the side, I'm actually putting pressure on the cells. I don't know how, many, how much torque is supposed to be on here, but what I'm doing is I'm looking at the gap. You see there's still a gap right here. You go down the line, and the gap is tightening up on these. Down here at the bottom of the pack, this is the main positive. So I have attached a four gauge wire right here. 
and it's going to run over to the circuit breaker. So this is the wire that I'm using. It's a good quality wire and then you just slide the ferrule on and now I'll be able to put this in here and you know in one of my previous videos I think I showed actually crimping this before putting it in but I found that these ferrules are such thin metal that crimping it actually doesn't do anything it still can just deform very easily so I have found that I can just put it in and tighten the screw. Now this screw is a flathead and that's why I put this hole here. So let me go get the flathead screwdriver. I added a piece of plastic on top which I actually cut from a cutting board. Uh, that gave me a half inch that I was able to carve out the inside and hide all the wires in, inside there so that we don't see the wires. Now, I have a BMS on top. This is a 200 amp BMS and I put a circuit breaker on the bottom which is a 100 amp circuit breaker. Now this would be fine on the discharge but I'm not sure I would want to charge these cells at 100 amps. When I was charging these, I did charge them all the way up to 60 amps and they could do it just fine, but the pack was getting warm. I could always keep my hand on it, it was never too hot to touch, but I could tell that it was getting a little bit warm. So I wouldn't want to charge this at 100 amps, but discharge, perfectly fine. Now the tabs are currently exposed, and so they could short out. So the easiest thing is just to put a piece of tape over it. Uh, but I'd like to put a piece of plexiglass because I, I want to show off uh, how they were assembled. I'm actually kind of proud of this. Nice. Looks beautiful. To attach this on the side, I'm just going to use some black duct tape. I just added this piece of angle to the back side on the top so that I have a way to screw this battery to the wall. Now in doing so, I had to loosen up these nuts to get this on. Now the method that I'm using to tighten, it, tighten this, I want to make sure that all of these are tightened exactly even. So I'm taking a framing square, resting it on the table, and I'm looking straight on and I can see that the top of this angle is at 8 and 3 quarter. Now the, this shouldn't have changed on the front, eight and three quarter, because I, I didn't loosen these ones on the front. So now on the back, these have to be tightened. So this one, I've tightened it a little bit, and we're currently at about eight and seven eighths, eight, 18 and seven eighths. So I need to tighten it a little bit more and bring that in 18 and 3 quarter so that it's even. And that's about good. So the battery is finally finished. I'm excited. I want to see how much it weighs. So I grab my bathroom scale. Let's uh, let's find out. Hey, says 71.6 pounds. Awesome. Now remember, this is six kilowatt hours for 71.6 pounds. That is a fantastic ratio. So to put that in perspective, each of my big lithium iron phosphate batteries are giving me three kilowatt hours. Each one weighs 164 pounds. So this is a way better energy density. <laughs> All right. 
I have some big nuts here, so I'm going to use them as spacers on the back side. Take my spacer out. There we are. Nice. I will be incorporating this additional six kilowatt hours into the larger battery bank behind me. This is a little bit of an experiment. These lithium cells are NMC and the ones behind me are lithium iron phosphate. Different chemistries. But this being a 14S and the ones behind me are 16S, the voltage ranges work out pretty similar. So I'm excited to try uh, paralleling them up and see what's going to happen. Uh, I, I don't know if maybe these will take all the amps or maybe they'll take no amps or maybe they'll equally share the load. Uh, but of course, when I first try it out, I'm gonna be going slow, uh, but I really am excited about it. Man, it's such a cool, tight little package. You know, I mean, imagine if you had a few of these, uh, you know, you don't need a big tower like this. This is being held on here with just four screws because it, it's just not very much weight. So four structural screws uh, are perfectly adequate to hold this up on the wall. On my last video, I've gotten a few people who thought this was a lot of work uh, putting these cell tabs together. I gotta say, time-wise, this was my easiest build. Uh, a lot less time compared to these lithium iron phosphates behind me and less time compared to my Chevy Volt battery pack or my Smart for Two battery pack that I've also built in the past. This was the easiest and simplest one. If this was a little bit intimidating, you could make it a lot simpler for yourself. The method I would suggest is you could buy seven modules. That will be two cells per module. Once they arrive, you can flip the two cells opposite each other. Make sure you don't short them out. But now you just have two cell tabs that are very close to each other. So now putting a, a bolt through there with a nut is very easy. You don't need a big aluminum block spacer between them. A uh, 1P uh, 14S. So it would still be a 48 volt battery, but it would just be three kilowatt hours. But you could then parallel as many of those as you wanted to. And that would be a lot simpler build. You could use a you could use a smaller, cheaper BMS and a smaller circuit breaker and save some money there as well. If you decide to pick up some of these cells for your own build, uh, you can use my discount code. That's David Paz, and that will give you 10% off. And it helps track uh, the sales in the affiliate program, so it does help out the channel with the kickback that I receive. Uh, so thank you everybody very much for watching. If you enjoy the video, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out the links in the description below. Thank you.